For over half a century, the equation of naval power has been brutally simple. At the center of any global crisis, you will find a 100,000-ton, nuclear-powered American aircraft carrier. It is the apex predator of the seas, a floating fortress that answers to no one. But on September 22, 2025, that equation was challenged. The People's Liberation Army Navy released this footage. A J-35 fifth-generation stealth fighter, a KJ-600 airborne early warning plane. They are not ski jumping. They are being launched by an electromagnetic catapult from the deck of China's new supercarrier, the CNS Fujian. For the first time, a rival power has mastered the one technology that defines modern naval aviation. This is not another incremental upgrade. This is a direct answer to America's newest $13 billion titan, the U.S. S. Gerald R. Ford. But this is not a simple story of a champion and a challenger. The public sees two supercarriers, but experts, looking deeper, see two radically different philosophies of war. And the real difference isn't just in the steel, it's in the shadows. The USS Gerald R. Ford is the heavyweight champion. It is the result of a multi-decade, $13 billion gamble to replace the legendary Nimitz class. Those 1970s-era ships, while formidable, had hit their limit. Their steam-based systems were maxed out, and their design couldn't generate the electrical power needed for 21st-century warfare. At 100,000 tons, the Ford is the largest warship ever built. It is a nuclear-powered fortress of global power projection. Its two A-1B reactors give it unlimited range, a 50-year lifespan, and a staggering electrical output, enough to power a small city. The CNS Fujian is the challenger. At 80,000 tons, it's smaller, but still a true supercarrier, roughly the size of America's older Kitty Hawk class. But it evolved from a different problem. China's first two carriers, the Liaoning and Shandong, were ski jump ramps. This design is cheap and reliable, but it comes at a terrible cost. It cannot launch heavy aircraft. It cannot launch a dedicated radar plane. Its fighters are forced to take off with less fuel and fewer weapons. The Fujian is China's solution. It is their first ever C-A-T-O-B-A-R carrier, catapult-assisted takeoff but arrested recovery, and it has one glaring vulnerability. It is conventionally powered. It must be refueled, leashing it to a supply line. And right here, most comparisons stop. Nuclear beats conventional, case closed. But that analysis misses the entire point. It misses the hidden innovations and the strategic doctrines that define why these ships were built. And it starts with the one thing they share. The revolution is E-M-A-L. LS, the Electromagnetic Aircraft Launch System. Both ships have it. Both have replaced 1950s steam piston technology with a linear magnetic motor. This system is a game changer. It's more powerful, but also gentler. It can be precisely tuned for a 100,000-pound F-35 or a 5,000-pound drone, reducing airframe stress and expanding the mission envelope for all aircraft. The Ford's journey to emails was long and brutally expensive, with years of painful public reliability issues. But those problems have been solved. The system is now combat-proven, battle-hardened and integrated, conducting high-tempo operations in the Mediterranean. China watched the Ford struggles and, with a clean slate, designed a different solution. The Fujian's emails runs on a unique medium-voltage direct current, or MVDC, system. Chinese state media claims this integrated power system is simpler and more reliable than the Ford's AC-based architecture. And in September 2025, the Fujian did something the Ford has not. It became the world's first carrier to launch a fifth-generation stealth fighter using an electromagnetic catapult. The race is on. But the catapult is only a symptom of the real difference. Power. The Ford's A-1B reactors generate an almost unbelievable amount of electricity, with a 25% power margin, more than the ship currently needs. This isn't just for speed. This power drives the ship's massive automation, allowing it to operate with hundreds fewer crew than a Nimitz, a massive long-term savings in human capital. And more importantly, that power margin is a built-in growth spurt. The Ford was designed from its keel up to host the next generation of warfare, directed energy weapons. Its wiring and power reserves are ready for solid-state lasers and electromagnetic railguns the moment they're operational. The Fujian, bound by its conventional steam turbines, has a fixed power budget. It can't easily evolve to host these high-energy systems. The second hidden battle is speed, not of the ship, but of the attack. A carrier's true measure is its sortie generation rate, how many planes it can put in the air per day. This is the Ford's crown jewel. Its flight deck is redesigned, with the island moved further aft, creating a more efficient pit stop area for rearming and refueling fueling. Its secret weapon is below deck, new high-speed advanced weapons elevators. Using electromagnetic motors instead of cables, they are 75% faster, capable of moving 24,000 pounds of ordnance at 150 feet per minute. The Ford is designed to 
surge to 270 sorties in a 24-hour period, a 33% increase over the Nimitz. It is an engine of relentless, sustained combat power. The Fujian, with its new design and angled deck, is optimized for catapult operations. But its human workflow, its elevators, and its crew are entirely unproven. The third hidden battle is survival. What happens when the ship gets hit? In a modern fight, damage control is everything. The Ford is a marvel of automation, with a smaller crew, distributed sensors, and automated fire suppression robotics designed to fight fires and seal compartments without risking human life. It reflects a mature doctrine of resilience. The Fujian takes a different, asymmetric approach. Declassified analyses point to innovations in survivability, advanced composite bulkheads to contain explosions, and hull-embedded acoustic dampeners, a stealth feature. This isn't to make the carrier invisible. It's to reduce its own sonar signature, making it quieter and harder for for America's peerless submarine force to find. The fourth hidden battle is the air wing itself. The Ford's air wing is the F-35C Lightning, a true fifth-gen stealth multi-role fighter paired with the F-A-18 Super Hornet. But its game-changer is the MQ-25 Stingray, an unmanned refueling drone. The MQ-25 effectively doubles the combat radius of the Ford's entire strike group, freeing up its fighters from being buddy tankers and allowing them to focus purely on the mission. The Fujian's air wing is what it represents. It launches the new J-35 stealth fighter, a direct competitor to the F-35. But its most important aircraft is this one, the KJ-600. This eye-in-the-sky radar plane is a copy of the American E-2 Hawkeye. It is the brain of the fleet, and it is a plane China could not launch from its old ski jump carriers. This one plane, launched by EMALS, fundamentally transforms the Chinese Navy from a coastal defense force into a true blue water fleet. So, who wins? This is the wrong question. The real question is, what is the mission? The USS Gerald R. Ford is the ultimate expression of American global dominance. It is built to project overwhelming force anywhere on Earth indefinitely. Its nuclear power, its MQ-25 refuelers, and its massive sortie rate are the tools of a global mission. The Fujian is not built to hunt submarines in the Atlantic or police the Persian Gulf. It is an 80,000-ton regional assassin. Its name, Fujian, the province directly opposite Taiwan, is its mission statement. Its IRST sensors are designed to kill F-35. Its air wing, with its own stealth fighters and its own eye in the sky, is designed to break out of the first island chain and deny the U.S. Navy access to China's backyard. The Ford is a proven nuclear-powered global fortress, already on its second major deployment, projecting stability. It is the peak of a mature, battle-tested doctrine. The Fujian is a conventionally-powered regional brawler, fresh from sea trials, designed to project change. It is the terrifying start of a new one. But the most important comparison isn't on the ships at all. It's the ecosystem system that supports them. A carrier is only as strong as its logistical lifeline. The Ford operates at the center of a global network of bases and allies. It can pull into allied superports across the planet. Its strike group doctrine is the product of 70 years of combat-tested experience. It is the pinnacle of a global system. The Fujian has no such network. It is a regional power broker. It relies on its 45,000-ton Type 901 fast combat support ships, massive tankers and arsenal ships designed to follow the carrier and enable high-speed replenishment at sea. It doesn't need a global footprint because it isn't designed for a global war. It's designed for its war. A ship is more than its steel. It is a symbol. The USS Gerald R. Ford carries the legacy of a president who steadied a nation. Its motto, integrity at the helm, is a statement of its purpose, to maintain and protect the global order. It is the known, formidable guardian of the present. The Fian carries no such legacy. It is a statement of raw ambition. It is a vessel of pure, untested, and revolutionary intent. One carries is the pinnacle of a global system. The other is the engine of a new one. And in the deep civic shadows of the 21st century, the true battle is not just for the seas, but for the future itself.